Hey there, I'm Ari from the Tech Buyers Guru, and I've got another product review for you here on the channel today. This time around, I'm checking out AMD's Ryzen 7 Pro 4750G CPU with built-in Vega graphics. Now, this one's a little bit unusual for a couple of reasons. First of all, AMD did not send this to me as a review sample. I actually had to purchase it on my own. And second of all, it's a product AMD doesn't even want you to buy. That's what's so odd about the entire AMD 4000 series of APUs. Those are their CPUs with built-in Vega graphics. These were highly anticipated, and yet when they were launched, AMD basically said, you can't buy them. Thanks for watching. Now, I thought this was really unusual, and at the time I did publish a video surmising some possible explanations for why AMD wouldn't want you to buy this product. But I thought I'd go ahead and buy it myself, and I actually had a contact in Asia send it to me from a retail store there. But take note, even in Asia, you can't buy the CPU on its own. It's not a retail product. I do not have a retail box for it. I had to buy it as a nearly complete system. And so I got a B550 motherboard. I got this Crucial RAM and an XPG SSD in the package. I had to buy them all for that store in Asia to even release the APU to me. So it was a pretty costly purchase. Please consider that when you think about giving this video a like and subscribe at the end if you do enjoy the video because this video cost me about $750 to produce and that's not including the time it took to review the product. So AMD is kind of getting a freebie here, but I am not going to go easy on it if I see any issues with this CPU. Now, I have been using it in my ITX test rig for a while and I've not seen any glaring problems with it. So... All I can say is there must be some other reason AMD doesn't want you to buy it because so far it's done pretty well. It's not like it's crashing, it's performing pretty well. But what I'm gonna do in this video is put it up against a couple of other AMD CPUs you actually can buy. First, the AMD Ryzen 7 3700X, which is a CPU without built-in graphics, but it's the closest to the 4750G in terms of processing power. They're both eight core 16 thread CPUs. Then I also have AMD's Ryzen 5 3400G, which is the most powerful APU it currently sells at retail. And I'm just gonna give away the conclusion right from the start. It's not nearly as fast as the 4750G, which makes it kind of a shame that you can't buy the 4750G. But let's get into these benchmarks and show you how this 4750G performs. I'm going to start with CPU-Z's built-in benchmark. CPU-Z is an app that a lot of people have on their system, so I think it's a great way to get a somewhat standardized look at CPU performance. And right away, I see that the 4750G is way out ahead of the 3700X. While CPU-Z is not that consistent, the difference here is big enough that I think that it goes beyond test-to-test -test variability. Something here is triggering a higher score in CPU-Z. Let's move on to the next benchmark. So here we have Cinebench R20, which is AMD's absolute favorite benchmark to trot out at every occasion. And we see that the 4750G is way more than double the performance of the 3400G, and actually a little bit faster than the 3700X as well. Now, this is pretty impressive because the 3700X is already quite good in this benchmark. And look, the 4750G gets ahead. It's looking good so far, but let's move on to the next one. So here's a dose of reality for the 4750G. While it's still more than double the performance of the four core 3400G, it's well behind the 3700X. And I think this hints at the difference in the architecture between these two eight core chips. They are simply not the same. And I expected that they would actually be more similar than they are. Remember the 4750G has abandoned the chiplet design of the 3700X and other 3000 series CPUs, but it also has far less L3 cache at eight megabytes versus 32. So perhaps V-Ray is suffering here due to that lowered cache amount. Now for an overall CPU benchmark, I go with Geekbench 5, and here we again see the 3700X ahead of the 4750G, and I think that this is a pretty good indication that in most apps, the 3700X is going to have an advantage, even if the 4750G can best it in certain very specific applications. Now here's a real world benchmark where I use Handbrake to convert a two minute video that I shot in 4K to 1080p. Now, of course, both the eight core CPUs are much better than the 3400G, which is really poorly equipped for this type of task. Take note that unlike the synthetic benchmarks that I've shown you so far, we don't actually see a doubling of performance, or in this case, a halving of the time to render. So that does go to show that you can't just expect that eight core CPUs are going to be twice as fast as four core CPUs. 
As for the matchup between the 4750G and the 3700X, it's actually pretty much a wash here. I'd say that if you did this 10 times, you'd probably find they render at the exact same speed. All right, now that I've shown you those CPU benchmarks, let's get into some gaming benchmarks. First, I'm gonna do the built-in graphics benchmarks, pitting the 4750G against the 3400G. Keeping in mind that the 3700X does not have built-in graphics, and so it will not be shown in the following charts. I'm gonna start with Rocket League, a 2015 esports title that's still quite popular, but has very, very basic graphics. I was actually pretty surprised here. The 3400G is actually faster. Its graphics chip has 11 CUs versus the eight CUs on the 4750G, whereas the 4750G has much higher clock speed. So these are really different approaches to accelerating graphics. And as you can see here with Shadow of the Tomb Raider, where I did an in-campaign run to generate a benchmark, the 4750G is way out ahead. Its 50% higher clock speed is clearly making up for its deficit in CUs and actually puts it nearly 30% ahead of the 3400G. Next, we have Far Cry 5. And again, the Ryzen 7 Pro 4750G and its Vega 8 graphics gets the best of the 3400G Vega 11 combo. And this shows that AMD really did the right thing by cutting down the number of CUs, minimizing the size of the Vega graphics chip while maximizing its clock speed to increase overall performance. By the way, I should mention that the GPUs were definitely maxed out in all of these benchmarks. So the CPU being four core versus eight core really doesn't come into play, but it will in a moment. All right, finally, let's get into our gaming benchmarks with a discrete video card. I'm gonna be using the GTX 1080 from NVIDIA. It's, at this point, a fairly mainstream video card, kind of on par with what you'd buy for 300 bucks. But to make it more relevant, I'm going to keep my benchmarks limited to 1080p, so I do put a little bit of stress on these CPUs. And in this set of benchmarks, we'll see all three of them, the 3400G, the 3700X, and the 4750G. I'm gonna start with Rocket League again here, but I have to admit it's not a great benchmark for a discrete GPU because it does have a frame limit of 250, which I'm hitting in all of these benchmarks. I've actually maximized quality here at 1440p HQ SMAA. And even so, I'm not really picking up much difference between these CPUs, but interestingly, the 4750G is the worst performer of the three. Now we'll turn to Shadow of the Tomb Raider, where I'm using an in-game run rather than the built-in benchmark, which I found to be a pretty bad way to test CPUs. Here we actually see a huge difference between the various CPUs, and the biggest difference is between the 4750G and the 3700X, which is way out in front. I think this is a clear sign that the 4750G is not the gaming CPU you're looking for. While the difference isn't quite as stark here in Far Cry 5 using the built-in benchmark, we still do see a difference. The 3700X is out in front of the 4750G and way out in front of that 3400G, which is a pretty bad gaming CPU. Now in my last game benchmark, I actually combined data for all the various setups, including the integrated graphics, so you can see how they compare using the exact same quality settings in the Dirt Rally built-in benchmark. And first of all, we can see that the GTX 1080, which again is equivalent to a $300 GPU today, is about five to six times faster than built-in Vega graphics. So that's no big surprise, but it gives you a sense of the difference between built-in and decent discrete GPUs. And then we also see here, interestingly, the 4750G is actually ahead when using a discrete GPU that may be just a quirk in the Dirt Rally game engine, or perhaps it is a sign that the different architecture of these two eight-core CPUs really do lead them to perform in different ways. I have one more performance benchmark, and it is the ubiquitous 3D Mark Firestrike that enthusiasts have been using for years. I ran the standard 1920 by 1080 benchmark. It is probably the most popular graphics benchmark in the world, and it really nicely summarizes my findings on the 4750G in terms of both CPU and GPU performance. If you look at the 4750G versus the 3700X in the physics score, that's the red bar, you'll see it's just slightly slower, and that does correspond with what I've found. Overall, it's not quite as fast. In some cases, it'll be slightly faster. In some cases, it'll be quite a bit slower. And then in terms of that Vega graphics, overall, it's about 33% faster than what we find in the 3400G, and that is actually fairly impressive and pretty consistent with what I found and actually better than I expected based on the specs. 
That's it for the performance benchmarks, but I have one more here for you looking at power use, and this is gonna be of particular interest for people building very small PCs, particularly those using the integrated Vega graphics. I've tested power use in a number of ways here, both with the built-in graphics and then with the discrete GTX 1080. So you can get a sense of how the two Vega-based solutions compare as well as how the 4750G compares to the 3700X. Overall, of course, the 4750G does use a little bit more power in Cinebench than the four core 3400G, but interestingly, it uses less when running a graphics benchmark, 3D Mark, and that's because the graphics chip is actually more efficient while the CPU is barely running in this benchmark. It is so bottlenecked by that GPU. So overall, if you're gaming, you can get away with under 100 watts of PSU power, but if you're actually doing productivity or content creation like Cinebench, take a look, 120 watts, don't try to run this on anything less than a 150 watt power supply. All right, having run those benchmarks, I now have a much better appreciation for why AMD didn't bother releasing these at retail. The 4000 series APUs just don't provide that price performance that would have moved enthusiasts to press the buy button. They were gonna be non-starters in the retail market, but for the OEM market, the business market, these are really great products. These folks need a lot of CPU power. Now you can get eight cores instead of the measly four cores we had on the 3400G, and you have built-in graphics. The graphics performance is okay, it's decent, it's better. It's not that great, it's not good enough for gaming, but it's good enough to hook up your monitor and get your work done. And that's what was important with these APUs and that's the market that AMD is addressing. Now you can go out and get a Zen 2 CPU with eight cores and deploy it in a very small form factor and deploy it in hundreds, maybe thousands of units. So think about IT departments having boxes and boxes of computers to have to deal with. The ones that have discrete GPUs are gonna be much, much bigger. These small systems that don't need discrete GPUs to run, well, that makes it a whole lot easier to deploy these throughout a work environment, throughout large office environments. That's kind of the market I'm thinking is where AMD is gonna be selling a lot of these. It's a great product for those folks, for everybody else, it's not that great a product. The 3700X is faster, it's cheaper, and it's been around for an additional year. So you probably have one of these already if you wanted one. Now, in terms of the future, I do see some promise with these 4000 series APUs in the sense that AMD has been able to finesse those Vega graphics to get them faster with fewer CUs, perhaps a little bit lower power use. It's pretty interesting what they've done, but hopefully in the future, we're gonna see AMD move to Navi graphics for their onboard graphics solutions because frankly, Vega is a little bit long in the tooth. It is still better than Intel, but Intel's catching up, and being better than Intel really is kind of a low bar. It's still not nearly good enough for games in 2020. Even Rocket League, which is a game from 2015, which has pretty low level graphics quality, didn't run that well at 1080p. I had to lower it all the way down to get that to run smooth. For modern games, it's a non-starter. You can't run it on built-in graphics. I'm sorry to bring that message to you, but consider yourself forewarned. Don't try to run a modern game on built-in graphics. It's not worth the effort. You're not gonna be satisfied with the solution. Now, for me, I'm kind of a niche of a niche use case because I have an ITX test platform that I move from case to case to case, and a lot of those can't fit discrete GPUs. Some of those can't fit large GPUs. So I needed something with onboard graphics so I could just move this motherboard and the CPU, the RAM, and the SSD that's all mounted on there and just move it to another case and not worry about do I have a video card that can fit in there? Can I boot it up with this particular video card? Is this too long to fit in the case? I don't wanna worry about that. So for my usage, I'm happy that I have a 4750G. I did kind of go out of my way to get one. I didn't get a great price on it, but I got it and I'm happy with it. For the rest of you guys who are curious about the 4750G and the other APUs, don't feel bad that you can't get them at retail. They're really not worth it to you. Uh, so if you have any comments or questions, please post them down below. Maybe you disagree with me and that's cool. I'd love to hear your opinion. If you did enjoy the video, please give me a like and subscribe. That really helps me out, gives me that incentive to do future videos like this. And as always, I'm Ari from the Tech Buyers Guru and I'll catch you next time.